Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving in to Illustrator on the iPad once again, and we are going to look at how to create logos with the pen tool versus shape builder tool. Now you may not know that the shape builder tool is in Illustrator on the iPad. I have a artboard in Illustrator already set up right here. It's just an A4 um, standard artboard size in a horizontal orientation. I do have this set up for RGB, so this one is going to be completely digital. You may have seen logos such as these, which are created with the Shape Builder tool. And the Shape Builder tool is a really handy tool that makes them really, really easy to create all those logos. If you don't know how to do it, I'm gonna show you how, and I'm also gonna show you how to do it with the pen tool. If you really need your pen tool skills sharpened, let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna create a few layers and you can tap on the layers panel or layers icon over here in the right toolbar. And I'm gonna create some layers. I'm gonna start on layer one and I'm just gonna create some shapes. So over here on the left toolbar, you have your shape tool and it's kind of like in the middle. So I'm gonna tap on that twice. I'm gonna choose a circle. Hold down our touch selector. I typically call it a constraint selector, but I'm gonna try and call it a touch selector throughout this video because that's what it's called. And then once you hold down that with your finger, you can tap and drag and it creates a perfect circle. So I'm going to switch the fill with the stroke so we can see what we're doing. Press this double arrow um, in between the fill color and the stroke, which it doesn't have a stroke right now, it is null. So let's swap those. It swaps them. And just for your guys' convenience, I'm gonna make the stroke a lot thicker so that way you guys can see it better. Bring that down over here. Duplicate this. Now, if you guys watched my last video where I talk about iPad tips and tricks, you will know that if you tap and hold the touch selector over here and then slide to the left, tap and drag your shape, you can then duplicate your shape. It's a handy little trick that you can do in the in the iPad version of Illustrator. Hold my touch selector and then drag in a corner to downsize the shape. I'm gonna make sure that it's completely central. Let me zoom in here for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, it's completely central with this shape here. I'm going to do the same process over from the original shape. Tap the touch selector, drag. You can drag to the side, to the top, to the bottom, whatever you want. And then you're gonna tap your shape and pull and it gives you another one. Tap and hold the constraint. There we go, just like so. There's another way you can duplicate a shape I've shown many times before. This little icon down here where it's like two pages with a plus sign in it, tap that and it duplicates the shape for you. So you end up having something like this. Now select all of the objects, tap on the icon in the right toolbar, which is the fourth one down, and then select Shape Builder, which is right under the Combine Objects name for that toolbar. And you'll see that Shape Builder shows up right here. And whenever you're done, you just tap Done. Let's go ahead and combine these shapes together. Tap and drag whatever you want included in the shape. I'm gonna tap and drag across most of these here. There we go. And then this one starts a new object. So I'm gonna do that one. And then this one starts another one as well. There is a break, which I did not account for in here. So I'm gonna have to modify this a little bit. We just tap out. I'm gonna create another circle right in here, holding down our constraint of course. There we go. Select everything. Reselect our shape builder. We're going to shape build together everything that we want and ignore everything that we don't want, basically, is what's happening. In the iPad version, you really can't go like 
negative. So we're going to click done for now. Choose our point selection tool from the left toolbar and anything that we don't want, we're going to tap it and we're going to delete it. And then once you clean it all up, you get something that looks like this. If you have a stray point, just choose the point selector tool and choose a point, press the X. It won't break your path. It'll just get rid of the excess point to clean up your lines. So now we add the colors and the colors for this logo are a mixture of greens and blues. So I'm going to choose a fill color. We're going to go to gradient. I think we'll just do a linear gradient. Let's see how that works. I'm going to put it at this type of angle here. And then that one is going to be a bright green. This one's going to be a light blue. There we go. This green might be actually a bit too dark and intense. So let's lighten it up, shall we? For this object, choose a fill color of that mid blue to that dark blue. I'm just going to choose a linear gradient once again. There is going to be a even darker blue for this last shape here. This logo typically does not have a stroke on it, so we're gonna select all of them and we're gonna null the stroke. And there we have our logo. Let's go ahead and fix this gradient just a teeny bit. Uh, you have your nice little logo right there. Now we can take this same idea and make it with the pen tool. First, draw a shape with our pen tool. I'm gonna just draw the circle like we did, like we did with here. And then we're going to do what we did before and we're going to take the shape and then we're going to duplicate it literally everywhere. Okay, now that we have all of our shapes in place, now I'm going to take all of these shapes, select them all. They're right now on layer two, which is exactly where I want them to be. Go down to our properties panel, which is the second icon, and I'm going to take these down to about 50% just so I can see where I'm going when I draw on top of these. And you can see all the overlays there. Here's our pen tool, and then we're going to start drawing out this shape. It's always a good idea to pick points that are at the top or at the bottom of each curve that you're trying to make, just so you get nice fluid lines. Put all the points into their proper place, pulling handles as we go along. And now we have our first shape. Let me go ahead and show you what that shape looks like. I'm going to switch my stroke for my fill so that way you can see that it looks like that. I'm going to change the fill to the bright blue so that as we continue on, you can see what everything is looking like. Let's go back into our pen tool and then we're going to continue creating our logo. Now, whenever you're working with just the stroke and you switch it to a fill, there are going to be gaps, which is why you always want to make it a habit of zooming in and going back and rechecking all of your work. Oh, I even missed one over here on the first sheet. Second shape and first shape are both done. And now we just have our last shape, which ends all the way over here. So let's take our pen tool and start creating that one. And my final point
point that I'm going to modify is going to be this one here. There is a little rounded selector here that you can tap and drag on and it turns that harsh point into a rounded point as you can see here. So I'm just going to pull that so it's not such a harsh point. And now that we have our logo shape, we can then start playing with the gradient colors, which is always my favorite. So let's choose our first shape, choose our fill color, go over to gradient, and then we're going to choose a linear gradient. You can always go back in and modify your gradients as you need to. Now, as you can see, I did modify the logo a little bit here versus here. So we can go back in and we can modify all of these points as we need to. Here you get two very closely related logos. So you can see how you can get a very similar effect using either Shape Builder or the pen tool when creating logos. And this was just for the Microsoft Edge logo. There's a ton of logos that you can create with both of these tools. A lot of logos are created with a lot of these tools. So it's no surprise that you can get very similar effects by utilizing both of these tools. Now, in my opinion, the pen tool one was a lot more accurate but the Shape Builder one, it can be a lot quicker. It just depends on your workflow and what you prefer to use. I personally always like to use the pen tool, but again, that's just preference. So I hope this video helped you guys to see what you can make with the Shape Builder tool and how you can compare that to the pen tool. You can get very similar effects. It just depends on how long you wanna spend, how intricate you wanna be, and whether or not it's worth your time to use each individual tool. You can also use a combination of these. I did not put that out there, but you can use a combination of these in order to make your logos. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon creatives.